Hello, in this video, I'm going to be giving you an intro to the procedural content generation framework, which is a way to create a very large natural environment with just a few clicks. First, why would you actually want to do this? When we're creating very large natural environments like forests, grasslands, actually any natural environment, there's going to be a lot of assets, a lot of pieces of grass, rocks, trees, whatever it is. And we don't want to have to hand place each one of those individual assets. We want to create a set of rules that we give to the computer and let the computer populate our whole world with those assets for us. Of course, we can still hand place hero rocks and trees and things like that, but this is a way to get you almost all the way there when building your natural environment. And by the end of this video, you should be able to use it to build this flowery grassland in just a few minutes. So let's jump into it. I'm going to be starting with this landscape with a grass material already applied to it. This is something I do just to make sure that when we actually simulate the grass on top of it, if you see through those pieces of geometry of actual grass you'll see a grass material so it gives a fuller feeling to our grassy environment. I'm going to come over to the folder I've made for PCG. In order to create a procedural content generation volume which is the first thing we need to make we need to enable the plugin. So if I come up here to edit plugins and I type in procedural we should see procedural content generation framework as a plugin. Go ahead and enable that and restart the engine if it prompts you. Now I'm going to come back here to my folder and right click, come up to PCG and choose PCG graph. I'm going to call this flower power version two. Now all I have to do is drag it into my environment. So I'll drag it straight on here. My volume snapped the size of 25 by 25 by 10, but you can always adjust this later yourself as well. The main thing you want to make sure is that it is overlapping with your landscape. I'm actually going to make mine a little bit bigger. Okay, so once you have your procedural content volume overlapping with your landscape, we're going to double click it to open it. When you first open your PCG graph, it's going to look like this. We're going to have an input and an output. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're not going to worry about output, and you'll see why in just a minute, because we don't actually need it to simulate on our surface. What we do need is the input, and this is what we're getting from the landscape itself. So any landscape that this volume is overlapping with it's getting data from and if I expand this node here I can see that there's a landscape output so I'm going to drag off of that landscape and I need to make a node that's going to sample that data which is called a sampler and the sampler that I want to use is called the surface sampler and this is going to be getting point data from the surface of the landscape in order to view what this node is actually doing we need to start generating our PCG volume which we can do by selecting it in the world outliner and coming over here to the right side where it says generate. We're going to hit that button and then come back to our graph and select the surface sampler node and hit the D key. The D key is short for debug and it's going to be displaying whatever that node data is and in the format of these cubes. These cubes represent the point that's being sampled on the surface of the landscape and the size of the cube is the bounds of that point. So since the first thing that we're going to be simulating is grass, we need to make these points a lot smaller and make a lot more of them. Over here, surface sampler and lower the points extent and I'm gonna lower it to one by one by one. And we can see that the points got very small. Now I can come back to the points per square meter and increase it. Let's try 10, that's pretty good. Maybe we can try 20 or 30. So now we have a bunch of points on the surface of the landscape, which we can use to spawn grass. But I need to do one or two more things to this first. Right now, if I spawn my grass, they're all gonna be facing the exact same direction. So I need to add some randomness to the rotation and to the scale of these points. In order to do that, I'm gonna drag off of the out of the surface sampler and type in transform and the one I want is transform points. I'm gonna hit D on the surface sampler to stop debugging it, and now I'm gonna hit D on the transform points to start debugging that node. And the first thing I'll do is come over to the rotation, min and max on the right hand side here. And this is a random range between these two numbers, and these three boxes represent X, Y, and Z. So what I want is to rotate the grass randomly in the Z axis. So in order to do that, I come over here to the Z axis and I type in 360 
as the max rotation. So it'll be a random rotation value between zero, which is this first number, and 360, which is the second number. And you can see over here in our points display that those little cubes are rotating randomly. Next, we can also add a little bit of scale randomness. I will keep the max at three maybe and see if that looks good. We may need to adjust this when we actually have our meshes of grass in there. So now we actually need to spawn some grass based on this point data. So I'm gonna drag off of the out here and type in static for static mesh spawner. Click on that. And this is where you're gonna add in the meshes that you want the points to be spawning. So for me, I have already gathered a few grasses, which I'm gonna use for this example. Actually just two here in the static mesh spawner on the right side here, there's a little plus button next to mesh entries. I'm gonna click that twice to make two mesh entries. In index here next to it, I'm gonna rotate it down, rotate down the descriptor and drag my first grass mesh into the static mesh input and then contract descriptor. And then in the next descriptor here, I'm gonna drag my second version of grass into it. It may take a minute to load because the first time it's loaded the mesh into the PCG volume. So now if I move my camera up here, okay, so this grass is looking really cool, but it's extremely dense. It might even be too dense. My computer is starting to slow down a little bit. So I need a way to filter out some of these points. So there's not quite so many of them. To do that, I'm gonna drag my transform points over here, click on my static mesh spawner, and I'm gonna disable this particular node while I'm working so that the meshes are not spawning each time I make a change. And to do that, I'm gonna press the E key to unenable it. So now that node is disabled and my grass should disappear. And now I'm left with just the points again. So in between the surface sampler and the transform points, I'm gonna be adding two nodes. I'm gonna hold Alt and click on the out here to disconnect it, drag these two nodes over and drag off here and I'm gonna choose density noise. And if I undebug the transform points here and I debug the density noise, I can see what it's doing. These colors of each of these cubes here represents density. So what I'm doing is I'm adding additional layer of noise on to these points, which is adding more noise to the color, which represents density, like I said, because the next node that I'm gonna be using is called density filter. And this node, if I debug this, starts to filter out certain levels of density. And we have a low bound and an upper bound here. So we can now use this to control how many points we have by filtering out different layers of density. So now that we have this control, we can plug it back into the transform points stop debugging it and enable the static mesh spawner by pressing E. And now we can come back to density filter and lower the density quite a bit. That's much better. So now we have a pretty nicely filled out grassland. Next, let's add some flowers. The cool thing about this surface sampler and the nodes we've already made is we can reuse them for our flowers as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the density noise, the density filter and transform points and copy it down here and plug it into surface sampler. And the density noise itself, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the seed so it's not exactly the same as the grass. And the density filter, we'll leave the same for now and adjust when we actually have the flower meshes in there, which is what we'll do at the end here. We'll drag off and make another static mesh spawner. And for the flowers, I have quite a lot of meshes here, which I'm just going to go ahead and add in here really quick. Okay, so I've added all my grasses to the new static mesh spawner, and we can see here that it's already populating great. If I wanted to adjust the size of my flowers, for example, I feel like they're growing a little bit too big right now. All I have to do is come back here to the transform points node, and I can adjust the minimum and maximum scale here. If I lower this down to one maximum scale, they will all be a scale of one. Maybe I will increase it to 1.5, and the scale min will lower to 0.5. Now I should have a range of different sizes that are a little bit smaller. But now that I have that smaller size, I want to add more flowers. So I can just come back to the density filter here and increase the upper bound and lower the lower bound to let in more points from the filter. And now I have a full field of flowers with just a few nodes and you can just start layering the complexity on top of it. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button and you can also find below this video a free training which I put together for 
for those of you who want to use Unreal Engine as a filmmaking tool, take you through that full process, start to finish, how to make your first short film using Unreal Engine. You can find that below and I will see you in the next video, which could be right here if you're into building more stuff with me.